promise, don't. He'll kill you. I loved you and you lied to me. Both of you. You betrayed me. What do you want from me, Ray? I want justice. Oh my god. No! I wanted so desperately to lead my lost brothers towards the light of the Lord. But I failed us all. And now my brothers are mortal enemies. Why? For what? A woman? Gold? Yesterday, we were a family. It was late August in 1864, and the murderous Yankee General William Tecumseh Sherman was marching through Georgia burning everything in his path. Those were bitter days for my brothers and I. My father was dead, killed at Antietam. My mother and I were all alone, doing our best to run what was left of the family farm. Two years previously, I had left the seminary, giving up my religious studies to do my familial duty. Now, everything we held dear was about to burn. And our last hope was the Confederate forces defending the Chattahoochee River. Among those forces were my brothers, Thomas and Ray. taking the forest. Donovan, get your men. Sir, we spotted him in the trees. Oh, shit. They got past our men at the river. Does Barnsby know? I don't know, sir. Here they come. Sapper, sir. They blew up the fortifications. Damn. Go, McCall. You got some hell waiting for you. Who got through? Those are yours, Sergeant. Sir, we have to tell headquarters. The enemy could have crossed the river, and my brother was there. You think this war's about your brother, McCall? Clear out those Yanks and secure that area, Sergeant. I'll expect a report. One of them's in 
inside the tent. Brian, go to headquarters and tell them we're holding the flank and to counterattack the bridge. Sir? Sir? The enemy's punching through the left flank. We need to counterattack now. What are you thinking, McCall? Did you forget how to salute? O'Donnell. Sir, I'm asking for permission to lead the attack. Denied. Their cannons are holding the field. I'll head through the forest. Look, I know that your brother's defending the river, McCall, and I don't want you doing anything stupid. We're pulling back, making a tactical retreat. Return to your unit. Let him go, Captain. Sir. If you can reach the trenches, McCall, I'll hit him with everything I have. Sir, yes sir. Corporal Scott will go with you, McCall. Sir. Get your men, Corporal. Follow me. We're going for the trenches, sir. We gotta attack. Are you crazy? How are we gonna get past their defenses? They're tearing us to pieces. Well, if we can't go through them, let's go around them. I'm not running my men into a meat grinder. Smith, show McCall the end of their line. He wants to get himself killed, that's his prerogative. This way, sir. There'll be two less McCalls in this world, and that's fine by me. This is it, sir! That's all we've got! Okay, now hold your charge until you see an opportunity. Something in mind for you. Well, maybe he wants us to get these goddamn trenches back. Damn right. Let's go, soldiers. Time to show these blue bellies the business end of our bayonets. Thomas! 
You're late. What? I'll rig the bridge, but I can't blow it up, because them some bitches took our cannons and control the field. Once the main attack wave comes, we're done for. Barnes Beal send more men. They won't make it on time. Look, here they come. Right, take the other Gatling gun. are getting too damn close. We can't wait any longer, Ray. I'm blowing up the bridge. Corporal! Wait. I'll go. But first, I'll silence these cannons. Hurry up. I'm almost out of ammo. Scott, follow me. those goddamn reinforcements. <coughs> Is that O'Donnell? That son of a bitch is all by himself. That bastard Barnes, we didn't send any goddamn men. Sergeant? I have new orders from Colonel Barnsby. He's calling for a general retreat. But we're holding the line. Why would he want us to back off now? We're moving to Jonesboro to reinforce our supply lines. If the Yankees cut us off there, Atlanta is lost. That's 50 miles away. You will obey orders, Sergeant. Or you will suffer the consequences. Easy, O'Donnell. Our family's homestead is in harm's way, and I'll be damned before I let Sherman's army burn it to the ground. You have your orders. If you choose to disregard them, you will be charged as deserters. Are you threatening me? It ain't a threat, McCall. It's a promise. You tell Colonel Barnsby that we're taking leave to defend our family's homestead. And that we held the line. Right, now get the hell out of here before I take your firearm and shove it where the sun don't shine. Barnsby will put us in front of a firing squad. Only if he catches us, brother. 
Only if he catches us. War changes people. Lives are devastated and lost, and families are torn apart. Sacrifice is rarely worth the price. My brothers had to decide between the cause of the Confederacy and the lives of their family. When I saw them with our mother and heard that they had become deserters, I couldn't believe it. But I knew why they did it, for the family. Look, they slaughtered Jackson's cattle. Slaves? Yanks, probably. <laughs> nice trick! When did you find time to practice? While you were getting old? Yeah, <laughs> very fast. I ain't leaving him to burn. All right, come on. Mr. Jackson! No! Hold on! We'll get you out! Take that bucket, Thomas! Ah! What happened here, Mr. Jackson? These animals... They wanted to burn me alive. They killed all the cattle. Slaves? No, soldiers. They took over your place, too. And threw themselves a party. What do you mean, took over? What about our mother and William? I don't know what became of them, but there was a shootout. I heard it. Soldiers. Oh my god. Well, we need to check these stables. This way. She didn't deserve this. I bolted the door, but they broke it down. I tried to protect her, but... You did your best. We can't stay here, Ray. Let's head to the harbor, see if we can find some transportation. Can't stay here for too long. You hear me, Ray? Ray? We'll rebuild it. After the war, we'll come back here, and this'll be our home again. Looks like we're late to the party. All clear, sir. Goddamn McCall's. Look at all these dead blue bellies. And we might have to give them medals for this. Right after we string them up. I take this as a personal affront. An insult to everything I stand for as a southerner and a gentleman. They violated a direct order. They deserted their unit because of men like them not doing their duty. Atlanta burned. Whether it's tomorrow or five years from tomorrow, those arrogant sons of bitches will hang. On April 9th, 1865, the Confederate Army surrendered to the Union Army at Appomattox, ending the war between the states. The battle was not over for my brothers, however, as Colonel Barnsby had yet to put down his arms and was determined to see them hang. The three of us headed west to Fort Smith, Arkansas, a lawless town full of gamblers, drifters, and gunslingers, a place where people knew better than to ask questions. We still hoped to rebuild our family farm someday, but for now, that was only a dream. For you see, the war had changed my brothers. They had become cold and violent men who took what they wanted without care or conscience. What are 
you two doing? Nothing. We're just having a friendly disagreement. Why is this your business, little brother? Why is it my business? Because I don't want to get kicked out of another town. Well, I don't either. Especially since Thomas here might have a little one on the way. You go to hell! She was mine! Yours? Are you kidding me? What's this all about? Tell him, Tommy. Unless you already forgot her name. Which I doubt, since you just finished screwing her. Betsy ain't none of his business. Betsy? The Marshal's daughter? Are you out of your mind? Little Coquette kept flirting with me. If the Marshal finds out, he's oh! going. Get your ass out of here with Cole! I want to know which one of you animals touched my little girl. You! You! Sheriff! What the hell is wrong with you two? You act like the war never ended. And you can just take what you want. Well, you know what? This time you crossed the wrong son of a bitch. You tell me who did this to my daughter, or I will gun down both of you. It was me. He's lying, Sheriff. I did it. Or maybe it was both of us. Oh, shut up, Ray. And that girl does like a good time. You're the deputy marshal. You gotta keep your head here. This ain't your business, boy! Now I'm not the marshal. So let's go. Time to dance with the devil. Ray! Thomas, please. Please. Walk away. There ain't no walking away from this, boy. One! Mexico. What a godforsaken land. Ray heard tales of a great Aztec treasure hidden in the foothills near the border town of Juarez. It was said to be cursed and that all who seek it will find only madness. The locals call this greedy fever the call of Juarez. Ray laughed off the curse and convinced Thomas that we could use this treasure to rebuild our life and our home back in Georgia. We were talking about this very subject in a little cantina near San Lorenzo when my brothers first laid eyes on her. She looked like an angel. Looks can be deceiving. The promise of that treasure has attracted a shitload of lowlifes looking for easy money. Are you talking about us, little brother? <laughs> Jesus. That treasure is nothing but a fairy tale. There's only one decent way for God-fearing people to make their fortune. With hard work and sacrifice. Or we can find some rich son of a bitch and put a gun to his head. You're drunk. I'm getting there. Tomorrow we'll buy some equipment and start our search. We got a lot of ground to cover. Right now, though, I just need a little more tequila and a woman of questionable moral character. Baboso. Mr. Devlin, I'd like to see you. What if I don't want to see him? 
He wants to see you today, senorita, in his bed, wearing nothing but a smile. Pendejo! But he never buys a mare unless it's already broke in, so maybe I should take you for a ride and knock some of the fight out of you. You little whore! this whore over here? Help Come me. and get her! You think you can take her no. from me? That low life is hurting no. her. We need to call the sheriff. What do you think, brother? We let that asshole have his way with her? I think no fucking way. Brother, I think you're kind of sweet on that gal. Come on. What are you two getting yourselves into? And what does your god say about helping the helpless, hmm? Now get your ass back in the saloon and stay there. not going anywhere. He's just like me. Small in the head? <laughs> no, no, brother. He's right. He's not gonna back down now. Not in front of his own men. What you waiting for? Move! We're running out of time! Wait with her! We'll meet by the church. I told you he won't run. I don't know where you two peckerheads are from! But is it really worth getting your asses shot off for some greaser's whore? You sorry assholes messed with the wrong son of a bitch. I'm wanted from Colorado to Texas, boys. I'm the one who killed that Texas Ranger in El Paso. And the Jericho Kid in Abilene. They call me the Rattler, cause that's how fast I am. The Rattler? Son of a bitch. So no one would blame you if you turned tail and ran. You killed the Jericho kid? So you have heard of me? Nope. I'll kill you before you clear leather. You hear me? They took her to the church. I know the way. Quick, let's get over there before they find out. I never thought I'd live to see the day a woman gets you inside a church. My fault, you're so damn slow. I seen little girls who shoot straighter.
You made some dangerous enemies today, amigo. I am Juan Mendoza. Friends call me Juarez. Ray McCall. And these are my brothers, Thomas and William. Thanks for the help. No, thank you, amigo, for rescuing my beautiful Marisa. I'd like to invite you all to my Alcazar this evening for a little celebration. Sure. Why not? Excelente. It is not far from here. Just ask anyone. Everyone knows Juarez. Thanks, Ray. But next time, maybe you should ask us before agreeing to break bread with a bandit like that. They don't seem like such a bad sort. You trust them? I didn't say that. I don't know who you two are anymore. Juan Mendoza was the leader of the largest outlaw gang in Juarez. Everyone was afraid of him, even his beautiful Marissa. What worried me more was the way Ray looked at her, and Ray wasn't one to back down. Trouble was brewing, and I didn't know how to put a stop to it. Friends, I invited you here today because I have something that needs done, and I believed you are the men to do it. The gringos you gun down work for a pendejo by the name of Devlin. This greedy bastard is blowing up every mountain south of the border, searching for a treasure that by all rights belongs to the people of Mexico. By people, you mean you. Why, of course. You want Devlin dead? Dead, missing, disappeared. I just want him gone. But to get to Devlin, you must first defeat his many hired guns. And you'll pay us for this, hmm? I will give you a share of the treasure. How you even know there is a treasure? It was the ransom for Montezuma, held hostage by Hernando Cortez. Aztec gold, emeralds, diamonds as big as your fist, riches beyond compare. That's just a fairy tale. No, mijo. It is real. Very real. And it can be ours. Where is this, Devlin? Ray, you can't be serious. You would be doing the people here a very great service. Devlin and his men have killed many innocents. Women. Children. My brothers do not need more blood on their hands. We all have blood on our hands, boy. You two will get dirty one day. Besides, who said anything about killing? It will be enough if Devlin and his men just go back to where they came from. Do we have a deal? I used every argument I could to dissuade them from this madness. But my brothers pointed out that Devlin was in fact an evil bastard who wouldn't be missed by anyone. Juarez told us he was Irish born and made his fortune in Chicago. He's a thief and a cutthroat who takes what he wants, murdering settlers and prospectors for their lands and claims. But as evil as he is, it is not my brother's place to punish him. That is the Lord's work. Avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord.
to do it quietly? <laughs> right. I used every argument I could to dissuade them from this madness. But my brothers pointed out that Devlin was in fact an evil bastard who wouldn't be missed by anyone. Warris told us he was Irish born and made his fortune in Chicago. He's a thief and a cutthroat who takes what he wants, murdering settlers and prospectors for their lands and claims. But as evil as he is, it is not my brother's place to punish him. That is the Lord's work. Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Want to do it quietly? <laughs> right. There's <laughs> I saw the wanted posters for you boys in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. The infamous McCall brothers. I heard you were deserters. I'm not famous like you boys, I just kill for money. And you two both have a pretty good price on your head. Wasn't there a third brother? Or is that McCall more of a sister? Do you want money? What? Whatever you want. I want you to shut your mouth is what I want. Who are you working for? Juarez? How much is he paying you? I'll pay you more. Ten times more. Just bring me his head and his little whore. Her I want alive. Oh, you won't be needing any one of the female persuasion. Not after I turn you into a Kelpie. No! Don't do it, Ray! What the hell? What are you doing here? Do not violate the word of God, the fifth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Well, it's a little late for that, little brother. Look around. Ray, please, for the love of God. Oh, where was your loving God at Shiloh, huh? At Gettysburg, at Antietam? Ray, if you kill him, you'll be just like him. And you will burn for all eternity. Look, I've had just about enough of your fire and brimstone, boy. If what you say is true, it's too late for me anyway. It's not too late. It's not. 
when our Savior was nailed to the cross, there were two other men crucified alongside of him, murderers. And he took one of them to heaven because that man repented. He begged for forgiveness, and he was forgiven. The Lord forgave him? Yes. A cold-blooded murderer? Yes. Well, hell, that's good to know. Ray is slowly succumbing to the darkness. I can see that Thomas too is drawn to the succubus. Why did we come to this evil place? I pressed them to leave, but my brothers have fallen under the thrall of the call of Juarez. It isn't just the gold they want, it's her. The way Ray looks at her fills my heart with fear. When Thomas hasn't yet revealed his true feelings, I see the way she looks at him. I'm afraid what happened in Arkansas will happen here. Amigos, it is good to see you again. And thank you for taking care of Devlin. Not an easy man to kill. Is that why you wanted to see us? To thank us? And to show you that I do not make idle promises, you soon will be rewarded for your efforts. So you think the treasure's in Devlin's mine? No. If we were to follow Devlin's method, we'd be searching for the next 300 years. I have a much more thoughtful approach. Amigos, I'd like you to meet someone. His name is Seeing Farther, and he seeks rifles. We will be aiding him in this endeavor. Now, what does any of this have to do with Aztec treasure? The Apaches have the medallion. Medallion? Si, sí, el medallón. The conquistador who hid the treasure created a key. A medallion made of brass. Legend has it that he took it north for safekeeping. And that is the last anyone ever heard of him. Until now. A Mexican priest traded the medallion for his life many years ago. It holds great power and will reveal where the treasure is hidden. So why not just go get it yourself? You could use it to buy a whole damn arsenal. Because it is cursed and has caused no end of misery to my people, the Apache. Since when do Apaches have blue eyes? My mother was white but my father is running river, the great Apache chief. I am not a white dog. Amigo, easy. We are all friends here. You have three days to make up your minds. Where will you get the rifles? They will need hundreds. For savages such as these? <laughs> So we headed north into the desolate lands of southern Arizona. Our goal was a gunrunner who promised to sell Juarez the rifles. The bandit leader brought his harlot but kept her close. And Ray's eyes never left her. I spoke often with Seeing Farther. He was curious about us whites and how we lived, and I was fascinated to hear of life among the savages. We set up camp in the hills outside of Tucson, and Juarez went alone to parley with his gunrunner. When he returned, everything had changed.
Things are getting complicated, gentlemen. Your gunrunner didn't show up? Yes, he's here. In jail. The Pinkertons were on his trail, and they finally caught up with him. The Pinkertons? Well, your friend must be somebody real special. Did they seize the weapons? Over 300 rifles. What now? Now, brother, we bust them out. Alone? Where are your brothers, Ray? What do we need them for? We don't. Would you like to walk with me? I need to fill this skin with water. Yeah, those babbling brooks here in Arizona can be mighty dangerous, eh? Wouldn't want a big old snake slithering up your skirt. How big? <laughs> You should smile more often. I would if I had a reason to. And what if I could give you one? I can protect you, you know. Really? Yeah. And I can get you what you want. What is it you think I want? The medallion. You could take it from Juarez? <laughs> I can take anything from anyone. And you would do this for me? I would do it for us. says you owe him some rifles. You lead us to him, and you may just live. Keep hiding till hell freezes over, or take a chance. You feeling lucky? You killed him, dead or if I can avoid catching some of theirs. Dynamite! chickens with their heads cut off. 
How about this time you shut your mouth and let me do the thinking? Oh, is that what you've been doing? Thinking. I put a lot of good men at risk to get you out. I don't want a war with the Pinkertons. What are you saying? You don't want the guns? I'm saying we need to renegotiate. And if I refuse? Then I take my men and go! In point of fact, they are my men. What are you talking about, amigo? The McCall brothers. I am their commanding officer. The war is over, Colonel. The McCalls are my men now. Do you or do you not want to renegotiate? The more I preached to them, the less they listened. They were outlaws now, and they didn't want my judgment. There was no longer any talk about rebuilding our home or our farm back in Georgia. As we waited for Juarez to return, the time dragged endlessly. Finally, Ray boasted of Marissa's promise to run away with him if he could get the medallion. He said he was taking the gold and the girl, and that no one would stand in his way. Thomas didn't say a single word, but I saw the fire in his eyes. He rode off in silence. Were you gonna tell me? You shouldn't be in here. If the men see... Do you think I wouldn't find out? What are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. You sold yourself to Ray for the gold. I didn't sell myself to anyone. He said he wanted the medallion, so I told him to take it. For himself? Or for you? For both of us. All of us. And what about Juarez? Ray said he would kill him. He's not the only McCall who knows how to handle a gun. But I don't want you to fight, Juan. I don't want you to get hurt. But it's okay if Ray gets hurt. I'm not in love with Ray. They were outlaws now, and they didn't want my judgment. There was no longer any talk about rebuilding our home or our farm back in Georgia. As we waited for Juarez to return, the time dragged endlessly. Finally, Ray boasted of Marissa's promise to run away with him if he could get the medallion. He said he was taking the gold and the girl and that no one would stand in his way. Thomas didn't say a single word, but I saw the fire in his eyes. He rode off in silence. Ray had no idea where he was going, but I did. Hold your horses, Ray. Can't hurt to stay in hiding for a little bit. Well, fine, little brother. Let's hide then. At their hideout. You are one impatient son bitch. We're looking for Juarez. That's the boss. I know that some bitch from somewhere.
Hey. We're looking for Juarez. Did he pull out? Mr. Mendoza has decided to continue his journey without me. Barnsby? He didn't like the idea at first, but I convinced him it would be in his best interest to leave you two behind. Ray and Thomas McCall. I made a blood oath on the flag of the Confederacy that I would hunt down every deserter who fled my command. Because of cowards like you, Atlanta was burned to the ground. My wife and children murdered in their beds. Meanwhile, subhuman animals are now free to live among decent Christian folk. Free to do whatever they want. Fornication with our women. Misogynation. Colonel, you will pay for your betrayal. You will die a coward's death and you will burn in hell for all eternity. <laughs> Colonel Jeremy Barnsby never laid down his arms when the Confederacy surrendered. He raised an army of disaffected Southern soldiers who weren't yet ready to admit defeat. He led his men west through Arkansas and Oklahoma, where they robbed banks and trains and hijacked supply convoys. Hounded by the U.S. Army, they were driven south to Mexico, crossing back and forth across the border, continuing to fight a war that had ended years before. Hunted down by the Pinkertons, Barnsby was captured in Arizona. He was awaiting extradition when my brothers unwittingly liberated him. I'll ask again, why does Juarez need the weapons? There's three of you. So if I beat one of you to death, it's really not a problem for me. It's payment! For what? The medallion. Please, don't hit him anymore. William! He's gonna kill him, Ray! What medallion? Look, there's a legend about lost gold hidden in the hills outside Juarez. I've heard of it. What of it? The medallion is the key to finding the treasure. Juarez is exchanging the rifles for the medallion. My rifles? Yes, sir. But they're useless. He paid almost nothing because they're worth almost nothing. Who would trade for rusted old rifles that aren't worth spit? Apaches. Juarez is swindling them. Is that where he's headed? Apache territory? Yes, northern Arizona. They have a guide. Good. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Hang him high. What about the boy? He needs to hang, too. For aiding and abetting traitors to our glorious cause. How did you know those rifles were useless? Who told you that? Me. So leave him alone. You? Well, that's interesting. And who told you? I'm sorry, brother, but I'm just not too good with heights. Well, you're gonna have to learn, because as soon as that elevator starts up, you and William gotta be inside it. Stay here and cover my ass. I'm gonna do a little jumping and climbing. Well, how the hell are you planning on getting down? I'll find a way. You got any better ideas? All right, go. But I'm saying right now, I don't like this. Come on, William. William, why didn't you tell me what Mendoza had planned? Thomas asked me to keep it quiet. He said you talk too much. <laughs> Someone is not being frank here.
Gather the men, Sergeant. We should catch up with them by day's end, sir. I don't want to catch them, Sergeant. I want to follow them. To the Apaches? To that medallion. The riches it promises could help us to resurrect the Confederacy. We could raise a great army and break free from the tyranny of Washington, D.C. The carpetbaggers will be driven from our land, and the darkies will be back in bondage where they belong. We tracked down Juarez, and I expected violence. But he told us that he had no idea that the colonel wanted us dead. He claimed that Barnsby lied to him as well. I'm not sure my brothers believed him. But then they never really trusted him in the first place. Besides, Juarez had the girl and was leading us to the medallion. It served Ray's purpose to keep the peace. As we continued on our way, there was a tense silence. The whole situation made my skin crawl. Seeing Father was the only one I could talk to. And then one night he just up and disappeared. We had no choice but to continue on without him. Deeper into a wilderness few white men had ever seen. No trace. It doesn't make sense. Maybe he went to take a piece and the Comanches got him. If that was the case, we'd already be dead. Come on, let's go. If he's still alive, he'll catch up with us. Go where? You know how to find that Apache village? To the huge weeping rock. That's what he told me. That's where the Apaches are. You see, we'll f <laughs> I'm still waiting, brother. For what? You didn't tell me how you knew about the rifles. You talk too much. Yeah, well, you talk too little. Look. The Weeping Rock. That's gotta be it. But we gonna have to go around those hills. Well, let's go. We'll get back to our conversation later, brother. We found it. We gotta go around the pass and find a place to cross the river. I guess we don't need your half-breed anymore. You know, amigo, I think your god is watching over us. We made it through Comanche territory, and yet we still have our scalps. Of course he's watching over us. He loves us. All of us. Even you. There are no evil men. Only evil deeds. Evil depends on your point of view. The savages here see us as white devils. Yet, because we bring them rifles, they welcome us with open arms. Friends! Easy! Sing farther. Tell your brothers we are not enemies. We have your weapons, your rifles. There will be no deal, Snake Tongue. You tried to trick us. This weapon does not work. One rifle, one of three hundred! None of them work! No! This isn't necessary! Kaki Ho! Kill them all! No, father! This is the young shaman who warned me of their treachery! That little bastard! Father, please! The young shaman is my friend. He betrayed his own kind to protect our people. And for this, what should his reward be? Their lives. Please, spare their lives. The young shaman's heart is so big it covers his eyes. But as he's seen father's friend, I will do as he wishes. The great Apache war chief, Running River, spares your lives. Leave our land. We will take your horses, your weapons, and your wagons as ransom. And the woman. What? Running River wants your woman. Juan. As you're the only one Juan. who knew of the rifles. No. You're the only one who could have betrayed Juan. me. Take her. Beat her. What? 
Enjoy her, for she is a lying whore, and that is all she is good for. The young shaman and his kin can stay in our camp and rest their horses, for they should not expect a warm welcome. Hounded by the army and pushed from their traditional lands, the Apaches hid out in the high mountains of northern Arizona and scratched out a meager existence. They naturally distrusted us whites. Our brother's cold and angry dispositions didn't help any. Ray didn't like the way the young braves looked at Marissa. He was restless and on edge, and I was afraid that at any moment he might blow. I wanted to go before there was bloodshed. But seeing Farther wanted to speak to us alone. About what, I wasn't sure. But I suspected that none of it would come to any good. I know why you're here, and what you want. The medallion. I can help you. Why would you want to help us get the medallion? My father wants to use it to buy weapons for a war against the White Eyes. What will the fate of our people be if he succeeds? The Apache will be no more. So you just gonna go fetch it for us? No. But I will show you where it is. You don't have the medallion here? The medallion is cursed. As I have told you before, our ancestors took it from a Mexican priest in return for his life. Soon after, a great sickness ravaged our village. Many died. One of the survivors traded it to the Navajo for food, and the Navajo too were ravaged by sickness. Their medicine man saw that the medallion had dark power. He drowned it in a lake high in the mountains. His people guard it to this day. So Running River was trading a medallion he didn't even have? He intended to show you its resting place. He hoped it would bring bad medicine to you as well. And in the process, bring hell down on the Navajo? We are sworn enemies. <laughs> well, that's pretty cagey. Two dead enemies for the price of one. How do we know you're not sending us to die in those mountains too? Because I am going with you. For without my help, you would not find it. Partner? I hope you're not bullshitting us, because if this is some lying Apache trick, it'll be the last one you ever pull. You're whining. Jesus. The fact you hate water is pretty damn obvious. You smell like the inside of an old boot. It, like you smell any better. You both smell bad. Your stink almost covered up the smoke. Smoke? Where? Here. Everywhere. We're in Navajo territory. The village has to be close. Hey, you didn't say nothing? What were you waiting for? An arrow in the back? The Navajo have mainly rifles now. What? If the village is close, we will see some lookouts. Watch the shore. Tell me, Chief. So that medallion's on the bottom of the lake? Yes. Somewhere high in the mountains. Oh, great. So, why are we going to the village? We go where the spirit of the Grey Coyote leads us. Spirit of the what? There. Well, son of a bitch. Are you telling me that we are being led by a damn dog? The Grey Coyote. The spirit of my great-grandfather, who sold the medallion to the Navajo. He wants us to go through the village. This way. Now keep quiet. Let's go. Nice and quiet. This sacred place. Now we must escape. I'll take the medallion. Now I'll take it. Out of the way. Stop, Ray. Navajo! Oh, for Christ's sake, let him take the goddamn medallion and help me out here! Hurry up, boy!
medallion. Now we must get to the boat. Oh shit, it's a little too soon for me to be taking another bath. Only through the dam can we escape. This is what the Grey Coyote was trying to tell us. There's no other way. Still alive and clean as a whistle. They can shoot at me, they can set my damn ass on fire. But I fucking hate water. Well, boy, we owe your great granddaddy a big debt of gratitude. Boy, great grandfather doesn't want your gratitude. You are like two mad wolves. You've insulted the ancestors of the Navajo and have violated their sacred place. For that, he will surely be punished. So this is what's gonna lead us to the treasure? Hand it over. Why do you get it? You two are not worthy. Your brothers will kill each other over this. It is you who should hold it. I will teach the young shaman its secret. Without his help, you will never find the treasure. What about the woman? We're not leaving without her. I'll lead the woman out, but... You must capture the attention of the Braves guarding her. Wait, how do we do that? <laughs> People will always watch a fight. A fight? Why not? You're both here for the woman. A fight will determine who is the strongest, the most deserving of her affection. What the hell did he mean by that? The object everyone's been after, the very thing that caused so much pain and bloodshed, is now in my hands. Seeing farther told me its secret, and now I too carry the burden. It hangs from my neck like a millstone, and Ray gazes at it as lustfully as he does Marissa. Maybe it is better I hold it, otherwise my brothers would kill each other to possess it. I pray to the Almighty for our safe passage from this dangerous place. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for Thou art with me. What did he mean by we're both here for the woman? I asked you a question. Don't push me, Ray. That girl's mine. Yeah? Well, what if she don't want you? She told me she did. Because she was hoping you'd kill Juarez. She'd say anything to be rid of him. You have a way with women, Thomas. No doubt about it. 
But not this time. This time, I'm the one who gets the girl. Who you think told me about Juarez's scheme? About them guns? Jesus Christ, open your eyes, Ray. You can't see the forest for the trees. How long has this been going on? Since the beginning. Why are you doing this to me, brother? It ain't about you, Ray. It's about me, and it's about Marissa. Waiting for... Chief, my name is Bonsby. Colonel in the Second Corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. I'm here for that medallion, and I will offer you a fair exchange. Hand it over right now, and I will give you back something that you hold dearly. Son of a bitch. He's got your son. I am already dead, father. Do not talk to them. You hand over that medallion or he will die. Right here, right now. Seen father is Apache. He will face death bravely. Look around you. Your village is gone. Your people are dead. Are you willing to sacrifice your last male heir? You ready to let your line, your tribe, your people die out? Let him go. Hausa! Let him go, and Running River will get you the medallion. No, Chief. I want it in my hands. Then I let him go. Understand? Running River understands. Good. I'll be waiting in the ghost settlement. You surely know where that is. You have until sundown tomorrow, or your son dies. That medallion ain't where you think it is, Chief. What do you know of it? Where else would it be? Who would dare take it? Your son? Ah. My faith is my shield. I have repeated these words over and over, for they are all I have left. Job had never lost his faith, even though he lost everything he held dear. How can the Lord allow such evil to go unpunished? So much suffering and pain. <laughs> I hold tight to my faith, for my faith is my shield. Seen father was with William and Marissa. Uh, if he didn't make it to the waterfall, then maybe they didn't either. You think they're dead? <sighs> that would be my guess. Then I think it's high time Colonel Barnes been met his maker. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, brother. But, just so you know, when this is over, so are we. I don't ever want to see you again. Waited a long time for this day, gentlemen. I wouldn't have thought you were Indian lovers. But then you boys constantly surprise me. And now the medallion, please. Well, come and get it. I understand you probably don't care if I kill this young brave. At least not as much as his father does. But mark my words, I'm getting that medallion, even if I have to pry it out of your cold, dead hand. Kill them! We have a piece of unfinished business left. You're talking about yourself, O'Donnell? I knew this day had come, McCall. 
And this time, you ain't getting away. You and me, in the square. Or what? You're not afraid of me, are you? How about we sweeten the pot? If you win, I'll give you the Indian. If you lose, I take the medallion. You're a lying bastard, O'Donnell. <laughs> you want it just as much as I do, McCall. You and me, mano a mano. Fair deal, fair fight. How come you're in such a hurry to die? Now, it will be one-on-one. -on -one. Fair deal. Fair fight. Okay, let's see what you got. You still want your Indian? That lying son of a bitch! See him, father. My son! No! Not my son! My son! You stay with him. We'll make sure that son of a bitch pays. I'll bury you, Barnsby. They caught us. I, I don't know how. The Mexican bandit. Juarez? He captured us and took us to the White Chief. Barnsby. He traded me for horses. Just me. Father, it was I who led them to the medallion. I betrayed the Apache. It was not you who betrayed our people, my son. It was I who led us to our slaughter. You told me what would happen. You knew. For you are seen, father. A true Apache. Ma'ande. My son. So William might still be alive. We gotta save him, Ray. The girl, the medallion, Juarez has everything he wanted. What the hell have we done? Is where I met you, Mother. For you see, she was my second wife, and you were my second son. White scalp hunters killed my family, and I avenged their murder. I raided the settlement and slaughtered every man, woman, and child. All but one, your mother, where I took with me to take the place of my Apache bride. My hatred for the white eyes burned inside my heart. When I looked at you, all I could see was the color of your skin. You tried to prove your worth, but I could not see who you were. Until now. In this place, when it all began, 
This day, my war will end. Running river will become calm water. I loved you, my son. Shazam. And I am sorry. And there is but one last thing I must do. Now wait a second. Just hold on. No! No! My faith is my shield. My faith is my shield. My faith is my... Enough! <laughs> Tell me how to use the medallion. Tell me its secret. My faith is my shield. You better talk before your brothers arrive here. Because if you don't, we will capture them. And we will torture them. And for what? For the gold? You told me yourself that riches are the root of all evil. My faith is my... Stop it! Look, this is impersonal. If not for you, I would probably be dead. You'll get your share. Your brothers as well. And Marissa too. There is enough for everyone. After all, are we that different, you and I? You hurt people. I don't. Oh, Jess, Jess. You are so pure, so pristine, untouched by sin. Well, eventually everyone gets a little dirty, mijo. Even you. Why are you doing this? Why are you destroying my family? For the money? When I was 11 years old, my stepfather used me like a whore, and I let him, so he would give me something to eat. Juarez is no different. I hate him, and I need to be free of him, and I don't want my child to have such a father. You carry his child? I'm not strong like you or your brothers. I need someone who can protect me. <laughs> like Ray? I thought so at first, but then I realized it wouldn't change anything. To be with another man I did not love? Thomas? You love Thomas. Listen to me. Escúcheme. What is waste for your brothers? He wants his revenge. Take this. I don't want a weapon. I'm not a killer. They will bring hell down on you with everything they have. We are outnumbered and outgunned, and I won't be there to cover your ass. Don't you worry about me. You just find William. Ray, back here in the Apache camp, I, I didn't tell you the truth. Not all of it, anyway. This ain't the time. I didn't plan to fall in love with her. It just... it just happened. Right now, the only thing that matters is William. You're right, big brother. Let's go get him. Are you setting me free? Not exactly, muchacho. I was thinking about what you said, about the Lord and how he loves you. I thought if your faith is indeed your shield, what if you were to lose it? What if you became one of us, a sinner? What are you talking about? Santos! Take your knife and cut his throat. What are you doing? I want to see if your god will protect you.
<laughs> nice shot, Miho. You didn't hesitate. You just took his life. Your brothers would be very proud. See, I told you that you and I were not so different. Maybe now you will tell me how to use the medallion, huh? Ah, your brothers have arrived. Good. They have come to save you. Speak, and maybe you'll save them. How do I use these to find the treasure? Do you prefer silence? Then you will enjoy the silence of the grave. Your brothers can tell me what I need to know. Kill him! What have you done? You should thank me for ending his life quickly. I could have taken my time. Better el diablo! Do you hear those gunshots? Your amante is here to rescue you. Soon I will take him prisoner and you two will finally be together. For richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, for as long as you both shall live. Which will not be very long. What? I am with child. The question is whose child? It is yours. If that is true, then I will spare you. At least until a child is born. And then I will put you to work in my whorehouse. For that is what you are, is it not? A lying, thieving, gold-loving whore! Okay, let's do this, brother. Gotta get out of here now. William is dead. What? What has killed him? Where is he? Where is that murderous son bitch? No, no, we must leave. Look, the gold is ours. What about Ray? We can't wait for him. Don't you see? This is our chance, our only chance. I can't leave my brother behind. You think he would let us be together? He would kill us both. But only William knew how to use that thing. Not only him. I grew up here, and I have heard the legend since I was a little girl. There is one candle, but three graves. The gold of Juarez belongs only to the brave. I know where those graves are. I can show you the way. to relieve for a man who just dodged a bullet. I killed a man, Ray. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with defending yourself, little brother. His blood is on my hands. At least it ain't your blood. Let's go, boy. Thomas is waiting with the horses. Come on. On my sign, 
Run to me and find some cover as close as you can. Now, now, now don't be afraid. Everything's gonna be all right. You keep your head down. I'll take a look around. You're done for, Cabrón! Where are you, you asshole? Right, right, they'll kill us! We need to find a You're different way out of here. here! Now what different way might that be? Listen to me! They're straight up! Fight like two men fighting for a woman! For Marisa! To make a right, huh? He fought like a wildcat. He barely made it out of there alive. He was out of his mind and still out for blood. So I told him the secret of the medallion. I figured it was a fairy tale, but at least it would keep him busy. But it was true. It was real. The medallion led us to the entrance of an ancient vault. The door was already open, and I suspected why. Thomas. Somehow I just knew followed the faint light through a passage constructed centuries ago. It was right then and there I made up my mind. I knew what I had to do. I had to save my brothers. I warned you, Thomas. I told you what would happen if you stole another woman from me. William? You said he was dead. That is what Juan said. I told you what I would do. Didn't I tell you? Thomas, don't. He'll kill you. I loved you and you lied to me. Both of you. You betrayed me. What do you want from me, Ray? I want justice. Oh my god. I wanted so desperately to lead my lost brothers towards the light of the Lord. But I failed us all. And now my brothers are mortal enemies. Why? For what? A woman? Gold? Maybe the time for talk is over. Maybe I can show them that there is something more important than pride and avarice and lust. I will not let you kill Thomas, Ray. 
It's none of your business. To get to him, you have to get past me. Out of the way! Ray, for Christ's sake, he doesn't have a gun! You know what I'm capable of, Ray. I'm a murderer too now. Just like you. I won't tell you again, boy. Step away. I'm reaching on three. One. Do it. Two. No! Ray! I've never been one to be superstitious, but maybe this gold is cursed. How is it you're still breathing, Barnsby? I don't know. That Apache chief took his knife, cut my ties, and set me free. Not a word why. Wasn't too hard to follow your trail. Must have been the good Lord's will. This gold will help me restore the army of the Confederate States of America. Under my command, the South will rise again, and this time we will be victorious! Colonel, you've lost your goddamn mind. And I think the time has come for you two to pay the price for your cowardice and desertion. There were three of us in those bitter days, and each of us would have braved the fires of hell for the other. No one could stand against us when we stood together. Three brothers. William, well, he was the best of us. A man of faith. He sacrificed his life to deliver me from evil. Like the Savior himself, dying for our sins. Like running river who spared the murderer of his own child. William wanted me to find the Lord, and in his sacrifice, I did. Oh, we left the gold. We knew it was cursed. I put away my guns and dedicated my life to serving the Almighty. I became the preacher my brother William always wanted to be and joined Thomas and Marissa in holy matrimony. William, I know you're looking down on us, and I want you to know your passing was not in vain. And though nothing 
is like it used to be. One thing remains, we are still family. <laughs>